Why did people carve the rocks, you know what I mean, and put the president's faces on there, you know, Mount Rushmore? Why did they do that? They got a big kick out of doing big faces, or did they want it to leave a mark? They wanted to leave a mark. They said, these people right here, they are our founding fathers, so we're going to put their big faces on this mountain, and fuck who don't like it. So the fucker got up there and started chiseling out his fucking nose and the eyes and all that shit. Who gave him permission to mark that shit up? You know what I mean? Maybe the Indians had a problem with him putting that fool's face on the mountain. How come he didn't get arrested? It ain't no different, man. That ain't your fucking mountain that you scribed that name on. It's not really like a, an addiction, but more like a sickness. You cannot control yourself once you start, if you really understand what you're doing. The minute you get that first tag, you feel like, I could have done that better, and you got to keep moving. The repetitiveness of it gets really addicting. Every time you do it, you're like one step closer to your goal, whatever that may be. Graffiti is about being loved, hated, whatever, just being recognized. The egos, the beef, the jealousy, the law, the sicknesses, the injuries, the hatred, the violence. That's graffiti. I believe there are a lot of misconceptions about graffiti. I think it's nonsense to say that graffiti is black or say that hip hop in itself motivates or pushes graffiti. It is not one type of person that writes graffiti. It's spam. It ain't even about my face. It's just about a name. It's somebody's alter ego and it's telling its own story. Graffiti is just what it is, man. It's just writing on walls. They said don't take the apple off the tree and now we are with graffiti up on the wall. So people got to do stuff that told them not to do. I write graffiti and you gotta deal with it. Why did I start doing graffiti? I was always like that, that kid to try to get everybody's attention in class. At home, I don't know, I guess I was just like scared, you know, like I wasn't allowed to be free in my speaking or my behavior or anything, you know, so I like played the flute, but then my father like made me stop doing that as like a form of punishment for me getting in trouble for something. It's the only thing I liked and you just took it away and like, you know, that's exactly what graffiti was. It was like that one thing that I could like, you know, jump onto and then slide down out of the window of my life. I saw somebody doing it on a piece of paper and I was like, wow, that's dope. And then I couldn't do it and it was like, damn. I started noticing it everywhere and I was like, fuck. It was just so sexy and I was a horny teenager, you know? Let's hit those streets. It was bad, really bad, you know? I mean, of course I stole, but like, wow, riding on shit? So many things could go wrong. You could really get in trouble. It was just crazy. Tagging is like the most buttery essence of fucking graffiti. You know, like, no matter where you catch the tag, especially in New York, somebody's gonna see it. Some kids I know, like, come through and they say, like, yo, Earsnot, that's you? I saw that shit down by the banks. I was like, Earsnot, what's that? And I was like, hmm, it's the first time I've ever heard that. That's kind of. <laughs> It's kind of cool. I mean, I like this feeling. What is this? This is, <laughs> you know, and then it's like, boom. I, I used to write Earth's Not really legibly because I really wanted everybody to see that shit. I, I didn't want Earth's Not just to be for graffiti writers. I wanted it to be for everyone. It's like the tag is like, you know, your signature, your John Hancock fillings, okay, pieces, eh, and murals, ugh. Go get a graffiti coloring book or something. You know what I'm saying? But tagging is where it's at. Oh. Tagging is the best. Write little messages. You know, you, you can like see where somebody was from that day just from seeing like all their tags with that one red mean streak. And then you meet up with them later there, like, yo, you were in fucking Elmhurst, weren't you? Yeah, I'm up. Ah. That shit is just like timeless. You do it in daytime, midtown, easy. Just fucking catch mad tags, like mad big. People in suits are like, hmm, I didn't see that. I, I like it, especially when I can see the cop and I'm like, 
uh-huh, catching my tag, and then uh-huh, and done. Circle, underline, star. You know, I can see where you are, so I know that I'm not getting caught, you know what I'm saying? This is the nature of me and most graffiti writers. You don't want anybody telling you what to do. You want to fucking break the law. You want to take that chance of getting caught, and you love it, and you love fucking with them and being like, well, you know what? I'm going to do it again, and again, and again, and there's nothing you can fucking do. I'm going to be fucking bad. You can make laws. It doesn't mean, like, you know, everybody's going to follow them. You know, some people come up to me when I'm doing a mural and be like, wow, this is beautiful. I like the colors and I like these animals you put on there and incorporate in this whole thing. I just hate that damn tagging shit, though. And I tell me it's the same thing. I mean, it starts with a little tag and from the little tag it gets a little throw up and a little throw up gets a little burn and a little burn it throws into a piece and the piece turns into a mural. And if I didn't do that tag, I wouldn't be able to do your building. I never heard of Tumor till 92, and I, I hadn't been to downtown LA in a few months, and me and my boy Bus had, had got off the freeway just to check things out, see he was doing shit, and that guy had fucking destroyed it. Like, just all the way down Broadway, you go down Los Angeles, you go down like all the main streets, and he had so many throw-ups. It was kind of like a joke. Later I met the guy, and um, he is one of the biggest humans I have ever met. To be a graffiti writer, man, I feel that you have to hold down your fucking name. That's it. Not just write on a wall and be a fucking piecer or paint in your backyard and send it to a magazine. Like, to me, graffiti belonged illegally. That's where it is. You know, you go to the zoo and see a tiger, but he's domesticated in a way, you know? So graffiti don't belong on a canvas. It belongs in an alley or on, on, a, on a train, you know, somewhere where it's, it, it could just go wild. This is my office. L.A. is the gallery, the streets of New York is the gallery, the streets of Chicago is the gallery. You can go to some places in L.A. where there's railroad tracks and crazy ass walls, you're going to see that art for free. You might pay for being in the wrong place. <laughs> To be a graffiti writer in LA, it's like gangs don't like you and cops don't like you. So you're in the middle of some fucked up shit if you live in the hood. Everybody out here knows how it feels to put your hands on a hot cop hood that's been driving around all day long in the hot sun. And they make you put your hands on there. They know it's hot. My second felony for graffiti. I deal with the consequences. I'm not one of those dudes that blame it on society or people or whatever. I did it, I went to jail, I came out, I did it again, went to jail, came out. <laughs> Do it again, get killed, die, go in heaven, catch some spots. Here's me breaking a pinata. Here's me a little older breaking another pinata. Here's the aftermath of the pinata stuff. And uh, this one's a pinata one. Just look at the violence. Old people are violent too. Here's a dead pinata getting jumped. Here's another pinata. Here's another pinata. Here's another pinata. <laughs> That's where the violence came from. I brought this motherfucker up since he was a little ass fool and he takes care of me and I take care of him. <laughs> TKO is not a gang and it's not a boy scout. Troop. There are a bunch of vandals that hang out together and vandalize or paint graffiti. The original name for TKO was Total Chaos. There was a lot of gangs around here, and there was two big gangs. These guys would think I would be from this gang, and these guys would think I'd be in that gang, so they always try to jump me. How many bullets did you have? I took in five bullets. Right here, right here, my arm, and my head, and then my chest. So we started hanging around with each other and protecting each other, and that's how it started. It's just like safety in numbers, you know? There's people in Canada now. There's the East Coast, the Midwest, the South, 
all over the West Coast. There ain't nothing I could do. I can't get rid of them. It's not like, you know, we made a plan. It just happened, you know? And if I shave my head, it's not because I belong in a gang. It's because it's cheaper to shave my head than go to the barber every weekend and get a haircut. Gang graffiti is gangs marking their territory. Graffiti is marking your name everywhere to let everybody know, this is me, I was here, fuck off. It's all about PMS. It controls all of us girls. What is it, a pink hammer? We work with Claw because she makes great clothes. And she lends us a lot of cachet. Being a little superstar around town. My name is Claudia, so my nickname derived from that. When I was about eight years old, my friend's older brother came home all high and drunk and said, oh, look, it's the claw. At a time in New York City history where a lot of shit's already been done, trains aren't here anymore, I think people need to do things to stay fresh and interesting. And I thought, like, an icon that represents what her name was, that was pretty exciting. The fact that it's an icon, it, it creates a mass appeal in a way that even the most legible throw-ups and, and graph hits don't have. And it's a powerful symbol and it's very direct. I'm making my stamp and I want to see it everywhere. If you don't bomb, then you can't peace. Don't bother. If you can't support your name, then you have no business writing graffiti because graffiti is not just the pretty part. Piecing is kind of the glossy exterior. It's like, look, we're artists. But to get to that level, you had to spend a couple of years on the street creating a name and a rep for yourself. When I first noticed her claw symbol, I thought her whole fashion background, claw, her real name, her personality as an individual, it all kind of came together. And, and using that icon was perfect. I mean, it was unique in its own way, but yet it's kind of summed up who she was, who she is. Pimpin' man slut, power money sack, gaining mad spa, huffing mad skunk, punching many suckers. <laughs> This was in high school. Claudia was basically a good child, but she did certain things that she shouldn't have done in her youth as she got older, especially when she became a teenager. She could have her moments. She could turn on a dime, if you know what I mean. Very rebellious, very rebellious. My other daughter is a physician. I don't think she's made the smartest choices, and I really do think she needs to wise up. If she were to be arrested again, it would be her third violation, and who knows what'll happen at that point. I think that I am a little bit more grounded because, I'm sorry. Bernard, you've got to stop that. She's not somebody who should be in jail. She's getting a little old for that. Claudia in her art right now, at this moment of her work, she has not let me in on exactly what it is she does. Maybe she's afraid to tell me because she thinks I'll worry it, even it more. It wasn't something that I cared to elaborate on or, you know, yeah, even wanted to bother you. trying. My mom kind of sees things her way. And... No, it has nothing to do with that, yes. please. I have not learned to appreciate graffiti I don't think, art. Yeah, I don't think my mom really likes graffiti art. I remember her distinct reactions were, why can't you paint a tree or a flower? Why do you always have to write your name? It's so immature. She produced graffiti. Uh... She pr produced, she did graffiti. I really kind of never really talked to her about it. She couldn't understand or... I don't know, maybe I just never gave her the chance to. I think she doesn't tell me where she's going because if I knew, I might drive over there and pull her by the hair back into the car. <laughs> so that might be one of the reasons why she doesn't mention it to me.
When I was younger and I would come into Manhattan with my friends and we would take the subway, you know, in the early 80s, the heyday of the trains. We're 13, 14 years old coming into Manhattan. You would get on these cars and you would be just so impressed. It was unbelievable to like travel in this like shuttle of art. There was something in my life that I was missing. I did not feel like I was here. And I really wanted to prove to myself, like, oh, look, I am here. There's my name. Graffiti just kind of drowned out all the insecurities that I had about myself and just made me feel like I could really do anything. You're walking, there's no one around. It's just this like private little world. It's a wild feeling of um, really being connected to your surroundings. And you can just take a little piece and it's yours. I'm fixing my spot. Somebody mistakenly thought that I am sleeping and that I'm not maintaining my spot. But they are wrong. Cannot let this go on. I was raised by train riders, and I have learned, you know, that if somebody else has a spot, you can't take their spot unless it's dissed. Uh, throw up goes over a tag and uh, peace goes over a throw up. There are so many rules and regulations, it's crazy. Not everybody follows them, but uh, I do, I don't know. My boy, some MBS. This will take four seconds to get rid of this. One time I was working on Crenshaw, a sign, also I heard a backfire found a bullet hole in the sign. So somebody apparently had maybe shot at me while I was out there. I'm gonna leave it like that for right now, just because you can't read who it is. Plus, I want to see if they're gonna come back and redo it. Joe Conley, the graffiti gorilla. In the, like the nine years that thing's been up, no one's ever tagged it you might as well just get out of the graffiti movement and you start doing that. I would go out night and day and paint down every piece of graffiti you have. I mean, I've talked to lots of artists, lots of them. I give them a business card, I tell them they come through my neighborhood, I paint this stuff down. You know, it's not the personal, it's just business. So, I'm, you know, some people aren't going to like what I do. I don't really care. I'm not a vigilante. I'm vigilant. There's a big difference. Confrontation is his middle name. He's done a lot. He's cleaned up all the graffiti and gotten, gotten rid of a lot of the crime. We like Joe. Joe's a good guy. When I started down here, these houses were $189,000. That guy right there is selling his house for $1.4 million. There's a kid that's um, writing up here. He's trafficking the school this way. He's only doing graffiti this way and he hit all these stop signs around here, everything around here, just a little with a, a grease pencil. Here he is right here, see? So see, now he's got some skills, because see, now it's darker. See, his old stuff was faded. So see, I would take a picture of this, because I'm gonna go to school and ask all the kids who BLT is. And I know it ain't bacon, lettuce, and tomato. So, and then they'll tell me who it is, and then I'll go to his parents' house, and I have a little chat with him, and then that'll be it for him in my neighborhood. You get a kid, and you bust him in his school for graffiti, and you think you got him in trouble. When in actuality, what you just did was made him a hero amongst his peers. Now he's big time. Now he's hardcore. You add validity to him. Anti-graffiti, my friend, no tolerance. And look who they gave it to. New being madman. No mercy. Nine millimeter. Nymphomaniac. Those are the things that I made up. Now the other things that I heard, no money, no muscles, that all that stuff. 
This is Philly, and we quick to hack a cat. You know, Philadelphia is no, no cakewalk. Philadelphia graffiti is basically a hybrid of graffiti tagging. Here, the tagging form is actually the most important. When I say hand styles, that's what we call tagging. And I believe that's just the script style that everybody does. When you come to Philly, you realize that you can evolve that even more. We have maybe eight or nine different varieties of tagging styles that, that everybody basically has to learn. I've never seen anywhere else in this country or around the world where people will write their name from the ground to as far as they can reach and not being a piece or a throw up, but just being a tag. This was kind of clean, so I would be like, just to add a little bit more depth to it. Plus, I want to confuse people. I don't want everybody to always read what I'm doing. So that's basically how we're getting down to Philly. We have letters that stand up and letters that lay down. Now that's N, M, with the crown naturally. And letters that are so complicated that they mirror a heart. So you can see the center is real tight, but the top is faded, the bottom is faded. And that's, you know, an up and down fade. And then I come down with a smiley face, a little weed in the mouth, a little crown. That's my name backwards. Quotation marks. No emphasis. And I hate y'all. Alright, and that's my name, NM, with a little script and a little wicked all mixed in together. See, that's a wicked right there. That's my man, Bait. We just trying to fill these books up. This is like around the time when we were still connecting with people. We were still hanging out with uh, different artists. I grew up in a very diverse area. Germantown has the best of both worlds. It's not too far from a pretty nice neighborhood, but you know, you can still buy crack. We kind of early on realized that experiences themselves could be our mentors. So I didn't necessarily need to like I didn't feel like I needed a father figure. You know, I used to run track and play ball and all that. But I didn't care for that, though, you know what I mean? I couldn't shine hard enough. I thought my name was so cool, you know? I wanted to blast the whole place with, with this NM tag, you know? And I thought that everybody was going to love me. At first, they hated it. And I got to admit, I had a sloppy hand. I didn't have that kind of control at first. But what I did have was a passion to bomb. You know, the thorough graffiti writer that ran the city. That's what I wanted to do, you know what I mean? I was living it. I would go out, boost, come back home, hide my paint. Moms would try and keep tight tabs on me. i try and slip out. i see she found my paint. Where my paint at, Mom? You know what I mean? She'd be like, what paint? He got in, in trouble with the law, and I had to go get him out of jail for graffiti writing, and then I was just totally upset. And I didn't associate it at that time with that little boy of seven and eight who said he wanted to copyright his cartoon characters. What I appreciated was that he had a passion for it, that it wasn't going to go away, that he was going to continue to find opportunities to paint. But it was also during that period of time when a lot of things were happening to young people in, in, in some of these neighborhoods, and I was afraid. I was afraid for my son. She would ask me, don't write on anything in this neighborhood. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, in her mind, she'd just be like, just don't make me see it on a day-to-day -day basis. Because I, I, at one point, I went bananas. I had destroyed just about everything because I had a bus route that ran by my house. I had to let people know that was my route. And it come through my hood. This is my route. Ain't nobody bombing nothing around here like I'm bombing it. You take a bus route, a Charlie route, subway line, and that's your route. You route from the beginning to the end. And it can't just be tags. It's got to be throw-ups. You got to do street letters. And yeah, you got to drop pieces. You got to show them you can take them to that level. These kids are coming out and they do throw-ups everywhere. I'm the king. Throw-up king. I'm like, that's just one part of the game. You know what I mean? That's like saying I'm the best baseball player in the world, but you can't hit. All you can do is pitch. You're not the best baseball player. You might be the best pitcher, but you ain't the best baseball player.
But sometimes we used to keep a dummy paper, like saying we had permission from the owner in case the cops came. Or if we didn't have that, we used to tell them like, do you honestly think we'd be out here in the daytime unless we had permission? You could go down the strip and see a rally. NM, 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 NM. Go around the block, I might have a burner. And now you look up on the rooftop, you see a straight line. NM, 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 NM. I didn't just bomb them with cans. I scratched the windows with rocks. Took the markers to the mailbox, the signs, stickers, whatever it took. MPH, North Philly Hustler. I bombed that whole neighborhood. That ain't the only body out here, trust me. <laughs> I find it amazing how many kids follow the art of Saber and his friends and all the other kids, but to hear the stories that they don't even know who he is. Some kids think he's a little Hispanic kid and others think he's a black kid. Some kids think he's a short white kid. Some kids think he's, you know, 16 and others think he's old. I've heard that I, I was dead many times. You know, graffiti is all about gossip. Hi, sweetie. This this myth. It <laughs> follows him, but it's a very two-dimensional character of who he is. He's uh, infamous, if you will. He's got a larger-than-life persona as far as his graffiti accomplishments and his name. Laser blasts and gem spinners. That's Saber's reputation. <laughs> and he's a pervert. The first day I got my name was the day after I had my first sexual experience, and I saw the letters, and I saw that was the most amazing letter combination ever. Like an S in the beginning, an A is beautiful. A B in the middle, which makes it symmetrical, coming back into itself, the E to ba balance out the A, and then the R to kick it off. It's just like the sickest letter combination yet, I think, personally. And so I'm walking with her, holding her hand, crossing the street. She gets hit by a car, gets smashed, was lying on the center divider, leaking out of her head. And simultaneously, I'm looking across the street, and the kid who gave me my name was getting jumped by these serious gangsters. Basically, the two worlds of, of women and graffiti were just unfolding to me in this like hellish turmoil tornado of like, holy shit, this is what I'm in for the next, you know, the rest of my life. When I would tattoo him, he would uh, he would come and just he would just unload on me this whole pent up ration of shit. It's just like fever of, of saber. <laughs> My whole family are artists, and both my parents graduated Art Center, so I grew up at Art Center and seeing hyper design, seeing car design. I freestyled everything. I had a general plan, but, uh, you know, nothing too specific. So I get the blue tape out and just started uh, taping out shapes. This is too hard, so I gotta make it softer. He drew every day since he was two years old. It was almost something he had to do because when he didn't, he actually became very irritable. I didn't have any brothers or sisters to beat me up. I spent a lot of time by myself. I remember getting in fights and kids in first grade over who was the best artist in class. I was the only kid that was willing to fight, so. <laughs> I'll even show you how bad of a toy I was. This is my first piece. 13 or 14 is when he started to change. A skateboard can't exist without a cityscape. So I used to take the bus down to Wilshire, you know, just to get away from the suburbs because I hated it so much out there. And then I started to see this little black book he would carry around, and I would ask to see it, and it was, he was practicing his tagging. I've been known not to be the greatest tagger, but... Eclipse definitely has one of the best hands, for sure. He's, you know, the originator of our crew, and Eclipse plays a really important role in all, all of our lives since we were very young. He got involved with some kids that came from a whole different background, and somehow he identified with that. It was important to be part of AWR because uh, it helped build, you know, Los Angeles styles, and uh, basically they are my mentors. One time I went to drive his car and it was so bad. 
how could you get 32,000 miles on a car that's less than a year old? He would take 30 to 40 mile runs several times a night from where we lived in Ventura area, clear to LA, to Orange County and back again. And in his trunk was solid spray cans. The most, the brightest, brightest red. Yeah. Fever red's more like a watermelon color. Intense red's like banner red, light red. You know, I don't know. This is uh, Montana Spain's distribution warehouse for all of North America. The spray paint specifically for graffiti, aerosol art. I gotta stop saying that. We're not condoning graph. We're not directly putting these cans in kids' hands and saying, go out and crush stuff. 99% of the customers are graffiti artists. When this paint first started hitting the streets in America, everyone was like, that shit is way too expensive. It's never available in stores where you can shoplift it. Now, the quality of the paint is so high, people have given up shoplifting. Where they shoplift other stuff they can sell so they can buy Montana. With pocket cans, you go to clubs and you get patted down, I can always get these things in. And then you take another step further with these little things. Poltergeist, it glows in the dark. Um, and this stuff, it's just paint remover. This is a must have as far as I'm concerned because I've ruined so many jackets and shoes. I definitely think I've been affected by the uh, solvents over the last 20 years of my life. I've actually gone to some doctors about it. I'm like, yeah, I paint graffiti. I've been doing it since I was a teenager. I'm in my 30s and I've emptied a lot of paint cans and seriously, a lot of paint. And they're all like, oh, don't worry about it. It's okay. And I'm like, well, I've heard rumors that it like affects like your bladder and your, like your nervous system and stuff. And they were like, I don't think you could really breathe in that much. And I'm like, no, I don't think you understand. The place is probably half full. There's probably about maybe 40,000 cans of paint in here right now. Knowing that people go through that many caps in like two weeks is like, that is a lot of vandalism. Like, holy shit. You guys gotta send us a bunch of pistachio next time. Have I felt guilty? Um, um, I don't think so. No. There's graffiti in the world. I'm not the only guy that's gonna write graffiti. I'm not gonna stop writing graffiti because there's a guy that has to clean it up. I hate to sound like a stupid teenager, but that's his job. I'm helping him out. Like, if there weren't people writing graffiti, they wouldn't need this guy, you know? I care less. Everybody feels sorry for somebody. I have a job too. <coughs> people have written graffiti on my store before, and I'm like, okay, you know what? That's okay. You know, like, I can't control that. I'm not gonna get all Christian fundamentalist about it, you know, like, oh my God, your morals and your judge, you know, I mean, come on, just let it go, dude. I hate religion, I hate fundamentalists of any sort, and I don't believe in a, a fucking snake in a tree. I'm not stupid. The Bible it carries a message, to so take it literally, it misses the entire point. And that same very message can be found without any knowledge of religion at all. Like, people will be good back to you if you're just good to people, like, you know, if you're honest. Like, those are things that people realize, you know, without religion having to tell you and make you feel guilty about shit. That shit is whack. Yeah. Oh, all gone? No. Shut up. Uni paint doesn't make the broad paint markers anymore. Yeah. Those are paint. Oh, yeah. You don't need to be fucking David Copperfield, fucking David Blaine to get a couple of markers out of a store. But it helps in tight situations, you know? I shop like this since I was like what, five, six. It's like a game. You go in the store, you G them up, like, hey, what's going on? You got that customer uh, shopkeep thing going on and they have no idea that you're stealing, no idea. Or they know you're stealing, they've seen you in their mad times and, and, and they still can't fucking stop me because I'm so nice. Me and him are like, dead opposites. I think of consequences that aren't even there. And with him, it's just, you know, I, I feel like getting a CD player, or I feel like getting this or getting that or whatever, and he'll just go out and do it. There's mad things that I will not pay for, will not pay for. I will not pay for any type of Gore-Tex jacket. I will not pay for any type of like meats, like chicken cutlets, steaks, won't pay for that. Definitely racking that. 
I've spent money on shit before, you know what I'm saying? And then felt like really stupid about it. Like, yo, I could have racked that shit. How do I feel about it? It got me through high school. These markers suck. What a waste of my time. I mean, I'll take it. But I'm not gonna be that happy about it. The city and county pay $250 million a year, our tax dollars, to people that to, to work with gangs and paint out graffiti. So why is our entire city filled with gangs and graffiti except for where I am? They don't understand proactive and reactive, and that's the problem with the city's program. They wait for someone to call and say, oh, there's some graffiti at the corner of Fairfax and Pico. Come paint the graffiti down. They should have somebody calling them. They should already be there. There used to be thousands of pieces of graffiti down here. Everything down here used to be hit up, and now it's basically spotless. They'll let these signs get tagged up all over the city. So this is a Crip gang. Let's say they're doing a project down in another part of the city where there's no Crips. They're all Bloods. The Bloods know who this is. So now the Bloods will think, hey, they came into my area and wrote on my stuff. They'll now come over to our neighborhood, and they'll start shooting people up. Those people have a better chance to stay alive without that gang graffiti taunting them every time. The city refuses to clean those signs, refuses. Yet they have the budget to do it. You know what, I mean, I mean, I even have to rub this stuff. It'll just melt right off. The city used to hand out stuff that was carcinogenic. The stuff got on my hands and started peeling the skin off my hand. How long were we here? Two minutes? I, I just don't understand why this stuff doesn't get done. They would rather leave that stuff up there or use chemicals that are bad for people or eat up the equipment and buy a new piece of equipment because you know why they got a budget. They gotta buy so many tractors in a year. Why don't we just maintain the old equipment? That's what happened with Joe Conley in the city of Los Angeles. Joe figured it out. This is gorgeous, this is beautiful. But see then as soon as you turn around from this artwork, look at this pile of crap over here on the side. There's like 14 pieces of graffiti. They etch up the sign, they got all this stuff here, they got this thing here, they got a little bitch tag up there. This is what pisses people off. Why well, do a piece of artwork and then vandalize them? I, I, I don't get it. What's, I, I don't get it. This wall hasn't been patrolled for a long time and when you don't patrol your walls, these toys just start fucking around and painting over it. And... You run out of this kind of paint, but you're way in the middle of nowhere, you know? So what we do when we run down, there's a little bit left, is you piss inside to make a little bit more. You leave a little bit of yourself in every wall. I want you to put sticks under the, those uh, posters and have characters holding it, you know? It'll incorporate it to the wall. That's some clever shit. Don't do drugs. It's a T-E-E-K-A-E-O-H. And it's T-K-O. It never looks like this. It's just, you know, a little sketch. And then he's gonna do like a little cartoon character in a boxing ring. Kids like that type of stuff, and the people like it. They, they, they appreciate that type of stuff, and they leave the wall up longer, you know? I was two years old, and um, my brother and my cousin were listening, hearing the ice cream truck pass by, and they were like, go get us some ice cream. You know, me like a dumbass goes across the street, grabs the ice cream, comes walking, as soon as I get a little taste of ice cream, a big truck comes, bam! And since then, I was just always interested in colors and, and, and art, you know? He started drawing in the table, in, in the wall, in the bathroom, he was in the bathroom, and he was writing, and I get mad at him, I told him, you gonna clean it up? What year was that? I don't think when you was eight or nine years. That would have been 1980. See, I'm old school, man. <sighs> Backyard, I have one picture that I told him to do it. And he did it, and I like it. That's the kind of art that I like. But to go over there and outside and do the graffiti, I don't like it. And, and one day he showed me that he painting right here, one a big heart, and he said, are you proud of me? And I was looking at that and I said, well, no. Do something right. Go to school and start learning. 
me and my friends used to kick it on my on my porch and kind of hang out before we even writing graffiti and just kind of hang out and you know talk about Nintendo because we couldn't afford it you know. <laughs> And uh, she would be like, hey, go to the park. And I'm like, no, I don't want to go to the park. Yeah, cause because the park is gang infested, you know? Go to the park. We would go to the park, get jumped. I used to have Prisma colors. So I would put alcohol inside the Prisma colors so it could just be a little bit more paint. And I was in my dad's restroom filling it up. He comes in thinking I'm sniffing it. You're sniffing paint and all this. I'm like, he fucked me up. When I'm painting the graffiti, I feel good, man. All the stress is gone, all the drama is gone. I'm just, it's me, the wall, the paint. I might get sunburned, some might be 100 degrees, I might be thirsty or hungry, but I don't leave the wall until it's done, you know? I should have added more green, more green stars. Next time. Hopefully tomorrow we could uh, get something bigger cracking. It's gonna say saber, but it's gonna take me a minute to get to that point. Looks a little messy now, but by the end of the day, it's gonna look real nice. S a b e r. You know, I mean, there's a lot of math going on. There's a lot of visual math going on that people don't realize how much math really goes on to do a piece. It's like with our pieces, we like to break them down to as if they're actually in fighting stance. The R leg is cocked a certain way and has parts coming out that'll get you. Or when I have certain center points to a piece, I'll guard them with little like spike connector laser things or whatever you want to call them. I remember even being young before Saber was super big. Uh, people kind of being attracted to his stuff because he was young and he was doing really technical pieces and he was very productive. And, uh, you know, he hit good spots. He wasn't that guy just walking down the street, just tagging on everything. He was the person that would take the spot and make the most of it. Saber's known for just going all out. He's known for doing things that, like, people talk about doing, but nobody ever really has the, the ambition or the drive to, to really try to, to go out and, and produce and accomplish. As far as the West Coast is concerned, he's produced like probably, you know, four or five of the like 10 most monumental pieces and works of graffiti. Things like the bridge on the five with GK, you know, that MSK billboard right there by the Capitol Records building in Hollywood. You know, those things are just like colossal. So it took me and Zess about three nights and uh, it's actually about three stories tall. And the funny thing was when I finished it, I get a phone call from GK early as hell. Your S looks like shit. You need to go back up there and fix it. And I was like, ah! So I went back in the day and fixed the S, and then I figured out finally it's done. Everything in my life always revolved around doing graffiti as far as I put that in front of my family, in front of myself. You know, I've put my parents through hell for this. There were points that became very low, yes. In fact, it was very disruptive to the family, uh, to my husband and I as, as a couple, but also as a, uh, financially, it was hard on us. Um, we both had jobs that we had to maintain, and it's kind of scary when you pull up from work and you see a, a police car outside your door, and you're not sure if it's just because he's in trouble or they're telling you something worse than that because I've known his friends have been killed, um, have been shot, stabbed. Um, I've known that he's been beaten up so bad one time that I thought I was gonna lose him with his eye. Uh, he wasn't gonna have an eye and he had brain damage where he had to go back through training, uh, educational training. And then years later I found it was his own friends that beat him up to jump him into this sort of quasi gang thing. And I have uh, brain hemorrhaging and uh, short-term memory loss. I was in the hospital for, for two weeks. His knees are blown out, his shoulders are blown out, and can't be repaired. Things like that that, to me, have nothing to do with the art. I couldn't understand how defiant he started to get, and uh, it had just gotten to a point where nothing worked. 
praise didn't work, threatening didn't work, punishment, restrictions. Eventually I told him, I'm gonna do this anyway. I'm either gonna let me go, or I'm gonna sneak out of the house, I'm gonna steal the car, and I'm gonna drive into LA, I'm gonna go hang off a bridge. And I'm gonna steal some paint on the way there. And I remember throwing a handful of cash down the stairwell at him. And I said, pick it up and don't come back. Call me, I always want to know what you're doing, but you can't live here anymore. That, I think, was probably one of the lowest points because the last thing you ever want to do is throw your child out of your house. Somebody caught a tag inside my E and like went all over my whole shit. Like, oh, there's this guy right here, expert. He's got a tag in his doorway. Yeah, I wanted to be clear that, you know, I fucking went over you. You know, like. That's what's up. Ooh. Oh, damn. <laughs> Whoops. This never happens. I'm way smoother than that. Ow. My father wasn't very good at paying bills. He never had a, a job, per se, but, but he would um, somehow bring money in, which a lot of it went to drugs. Like on one of his birthdays, you know, one of the rare happy times of the year and shit, I asked him how old he was, and he just like slaps me mad hard. What the fuck just happened, you know what I mean? I was like, he was like, he, he said something about it being disrespectful, and I'd be asking, like, yeah, old days, how old they are. There was very little affection in our house growing up. You know, we were raised by a television. Uh, that's pretty much where we got our sense of family from. Yo, Curls, what's up? We got those fours in, those gray fours, gray and black, they're hot. So it was hard, but uh, we just found ways to occupy our time. I was in the bathroom of some hotel room in Jersey with like dishes in the sink. We had just finished eating. And my parents were yelling like put downs and shit at me. Like I wish I knew exactly what it was that they were yelling at me about. It was so stupid and frivolous. They were just taking out their frustrations on me and I just wasn't man enough for it. Like, I couldn't take it anymore. It was just like they've been doing it my whole life. And I was sitting there and I'm like, dude, tomorrow I'm not coming back from school. I'm just like out. <sighs> a lot of care and tenderness that goes into handling sneakers. And I was just like, I'm gone. And I didn't come back. I just turned 17, I think. So I didn't finish my senior year of high school. I didn't finish at all. I like skateboarded with my friends all day, and then like at the end of the night, it's like, I just fucking go on the train. It was all good, and just rack everything I needed because it was just sweet like that for me to roast. He had like a Mountain Smith backpack on the front and a Mountain Smith backpack on the back, and a skateboard and like two bags in his hands, and just like a gang of paint and a gang of markers and God knows what else. I like all my shit, you know? Like I have my shit, my big ass bag. Fucking, I was just like my ill pillow, and I'll just like sit, and I'm on point too, you know, I'm not like fucking Daryl sleep. Everyone partying, like a lot of drugs, a lot of drinking, we were just young kids, just trying to have a good time, basically. It was so exciting, because it was like, everything was like so new, I'd never done anything before. You know, spend a week in jail, I'd be like, wow, the whole time, like, what's gonna happen next? Like, it's, it's you know, I had bad fun. Toughened me up. All that stuff that he held inside just, exploded out and it was it was it was really a shock. I met my first or just my only like boyfriend Paul 
and like you know I moved in with him in the Bronx total like domesticated you know I, I, I didn't know how to function like in a regular lifestyle like you know that was good homophobia in the real world is hard enough imagine what it's like in the graffiti world you know the fact that you know as a black man he's standing strong as a writer and proud of who he is and his sexuality I think is fucking amazing people are like oh he's not even hiding it oh I'm here to break stereotypes. That's why I like people know that I'm gay and shit and like fucking, you know, and man, I'll fuck you up as a gay person, you know what I mean? And I'll, and I'll write graffiti on your face and shit. And I'll beat you in a fucking game of Jeopardy. And I'll fucking out like, you know, run you in some 100 meter dash. And fucking, uh, here comes the helicopter, so we're gonna chill. Oh, it's police. Is it? Yeah. It's not a police, that's security or something. All right, well, I saw a little light. Miss 17 and I paint illegal graffiti in very high traffic areas where it gets a lot of attention. I like to call them jock spots. There are spots that, you know, men would be concerned about being at, you know, all hours of the night. And I know she's up there with like 17 and I mean, I've been in the boondocks and in the middle of the Bronx and, you know, in crazy kind of locations, and I've been like, damn. Chill, chill. When we go out bombing, we are one unit. I mean, we just take turns. One of us is gonna look out, eagle eye, every direction, make sure nobody's coming. That's how you have to do it. If you don't have each other's backs, no one's gonna get your back for you. PMS for life. It's the only crew I will ever rep. Going to these really fucked up neighborhoods and essentially I'm this little white girl running around wherever I please, writing my name, and so when I teamed up with Claw, suddenly it became more obvious that I would be a victim because we had guys following us and we had guys trying to hit on us and didn't want to take no for an answer. This guy's backing up because he thinks we're hookers. They always <laughs> think I'm a hooker. And a cheap one, I might add. Yeah. Anybody messes with me, I'm gonna spray him right in the face. Stop, hold it, freeze, now. I like your ball ball. When we come out, if we just catch tags on the little bridge that's alongside of here, that should be hot because it's oh, very. Yeah. A lot of out of towners are coming and bombing right up here in the little industrial zone and then leaving. <laughs> I'm Wall City. I hit the Bronx. All right, let's go. What else should we do? Um, we could do that shit on the Bruckner Street right close to here. Yeah, it'd be great. Do we have to climb a fence to get in there? No. You been there, boy. I see you in a minute. Yo, what's up, Wiz? It's your boy and them. Big Wiz. Play, let me get a snack. snack. Come on, I ain't gonna snatch your fries. Come on, let me get a snack. <laughs> That's that Philly stone face. <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna stop through, man. I'm gonna tell her we're gonna get together. We're at the bar. Get your pass from your lady. <laughs> WAB, we ain't bullshit. White and black. That was the crew. OTM, out taking money. So that'll give you a little bit of an idea of what we were about. If you're truly a graffiti writer, you cannot deny the fact that you are committing crimes. And you can sugarcoat it all you want to, but if you're breaking into things and you're stealing your supplies, uh, you're a thief. If you're somebody that, that steals paint to support the graffiti that you want to do, eventually that goes into another level. You want to go to a party, you want to look good, so you go steal some clothes to go to the party, you know what I mean? We used to stick people up, 
used to rob people, a lot of fighting. Uh, I must have got locked up six or seven times in one summer. And, you know, I don't know how I beat every case. I know, I know my mom was upset because she felt like I wasn't learning a lesson here, you know what I mean? You get locked up and you go in there and you beat the case and then you walk out with that smug look on your face and she's like, wow, this is never gonna end. But my mother, you know, as, as supportive as she was trying to be, she was still just my mother, you know what I mean? I didn't have a father figure, so I found all that. Like, a lot of you finds it in the street, you know? I just didn't happen to find a gang. I found it within myself, but it was still in the street, you know? Uh, one of my best friends died in this hospital, shot to death down North Philadelphia, a boy named Reed Ryan. He's the right knees, good friend of mine. Drove himself to this hospital when he got shot, died right on the table. That's the Sam tag right there. And that's old, man. So my man been dead for 10 years. Sam mom lived right there. It's old family. And this the piece that I did for him up here. Yeah, I did this a while back. I had Espo do that with me. Sam Martinez, lost but not forgotten. There go my boy right there. That's my man right on deck. Pee Wee, Dio, and Decca. <laughs> Decca star to keep it real. Yeah, that's what we used. That's that Philly hand style with the fade right there. What I was telling you about the up fade. You see the dots popping? See that? Boom, boom. Boom! Philadelphia, we were very blessed to see our old heads come back in the past 10 years. Chad Ism, TRK, the real king. That's what he go by. That cat has always been bombing forever, man. I'm talking about all of them. And they took the city epidemic style. That Philly graph is so strong that once they saw one of their buddies go out, they had to go out. And somebody saw them two cats go out, and they had to go out. So you saw everybody. I mean, one of them was my postman. <laughs> he used to come deliver my mail. I had no idea it was the bull. You know, and he was infamous as thing Satan. Infamous the bull. This a war. He got X'd out by a dude who wrote B.E. That's a bull right bait. He's, he, he older than me and been right longer than me. He'll never stop. Him, catism, it's like 10 of them that are like, we'll never quit bombing. Gotta respect him for that. Dude's got two hip replacements. He had one hip replacement. He was out a week later walking around. This guy's just glutton. He's an animal. Well, I'm afraid of heights, but if I'm not willing to go where the kids are going, then they know I'm full of shit. Once I get rid of them on the street, they graduated to the billboard, so I had to figure a way to get up on top of billboards. And then once they figured out I could go up where they were, they could go as high as they wanted to go, they stopped going up there because then there was no point. And then they realized they couldn't beat me. Plus, I was older than they were, I was slower than they were, there was more of them. And they, you know, so what's the point? If you know you're just gonna waste your spray paint coming in some guy's area, just find a different area. I mean, I, I can't stop them from doing graffiti all over the city, but I will stop them if they come in here. Nod is not. With a name like that, he ought to be not. One time the guys kept doing a billboard down here, it was like twice as high as that one. So when I was done painting, I put a memo up there to him. Next fucker up gets thrown off. <laughs> Amazingly enough, they didn't do that billboard anymore. You gotta be a little crazy, I think. Otherwise, people don't take you serious. Oh, my bitches. When I control a tag crew, I put that on top of it, so then they kind of know that they have to stay out. It's like a joke. <laughs> Man, if they let me run this city, I'm telling you, this place would be running. And all I want is a percentage of what I save. Motherfucker, I'm retiring. Where are the Oakland tracks? This is a pretty famous yard. It's been getting painted for a few decades. I've had many pieces on this wall right here. Oh, I like that Beats. That's pretty fresh. It has a lot of motion to it, you know? My styles flare out towards the bottom a little bit, too, because of the J and the E. And it reminds me of that a little bit, and that's why I like it. We're benching. 
That's an old term from New York City, from sitting in the subway stations, sitting on the bench waiting for subway cars to go by and look at the pieces. I know that people absolutely love trains and they're really romantic about it, but I mean, I love them too. I just happen to love writing on them and I love seeing them with graffiti on them. The motion of it is um, a powerful thing. That tag I did in probably Baltimore, D.C. like eight years ago. Man, it's come a long way. I grew up in Baltimore, like right on the edge of the city. Suburbs. Right after my parents got married, my dad got drafted to go to Vietnam. He was a helicopter pilot, and their helicopter was shot up, and there wasn't one bolt found, a couple parts to machine guns, and they found my dad's uh, gold wedding ring. I think it's made me bitter at times. It's made me a little bit uncaring of other people's losses in a way. It's, it's, I hate to say that, but it's just automatic, you know? I think about it a lot when I'm painting, you know, especially when I'm bombing. I'm proud of my dad, though. There's no doubt about that. I remember uh, drawing the lettering from the Suicidal Tendencies first album on my bedroom wall. And, you know, to a parent, when <laughs> they see Suicidal Tendencies written on their kid's wall, I don't think that went over too big. I think I wrote Graffiti Strikes. <laughs> and then I changed it to Master. But I stopped writing that because people were writing Bader after my tag, and that wasn't really what I was going for. I think it's just more natural to write your name than to, to make up something, you know? At that point, I was getting into so much trouble other than graffiti, like, you know, breaking in businesses and stealing safes and doing smash and grabs and, like, just stealing cars like it was graffiti, like, oh, I can get the baddest car tonight, you know? Graffiti saved me from that shit. I started, like, learning that, man, my friends that I do this other shit with, they're scumbags. I don't want nothing to do with them. I want to hang out with these writers. You know, they're, like, far more interesting, honorable people. Jace was the first person to ever take me racking. It was like a good trade-off, I guess. Like, I was the first person to take him to do freight. If you're a train cop in a certain city, you know, everyone painting freight, they're obviously not doing it while the train's in motion. It's only stopped in, like, this handful of places, so cops started to like, you know, just happen by those spots in the middle of the night just in case. And like one time, uh, I remember I was with Evade. I just did the outline of a J and I hear a cop car like just mobbing down the tracks at us. They stopped the car and like, freeze, freeze. put your hands up. Um, fuck that. I jumped up on this fence. And the whole top of the fence just snapped and off. And dog jumped on the Vade. Just climbs up on top of the shed. And jumped on this garage. Just launches over. Like my foot fell through the roof. Boom, gets up, runs again. Bam. Made tons of noise. Fucked up these people's roofs. We're hiding behind a car in a driveway. Someone came up to their door. Hey, what the fuck are you doing with my car? The cop immediately stopped, jumped out. It was on again. Had to jump a fence, ran through this yard. I was running through one yard. He was running through another. We were running like literally like next to them. There was like some woman in her nightgown making like a snack in her kitchen with her back door open. And the like runs right past her. Hey, how's it going? She's like, what the fuck? You know? We hid for a few hours. In case something like this happened, I'd take my hair down. I'd just look like a totally different person because the hair is like down to here. I walked back to the car, went and picked up the vade. It's a full moon, and I see the silhouette of a long-haired Jace. Dude, come on. He may not come home one night. Usually, he comes back in the morning, but yeah, those are good nights, right? So a lot of people go and they paint freights, and they'll do like a piece and like a couple of tags, and then that's it. That's like the appetizer for him. say it's revenge, because I'm not mad at the trains, but it's just letting off a lot of steam, just smashing car after car after car. And it's like I'm at war with the train, you know? 
when I've done every single thing in the yard, I feel so satisfied, you know? It's like the best feeling, like, I'm not wasting my time. It, it all counts. You can't be at a train crossing without seeing a line go by without at least a couple of throw-ups from him. Nine times out of 10, you're gonna see at least a JE like hollow up there. And people would like bet. That money on seeing a J throw up on, you know, at least one of those cars that every line goes by. If you're gonna think about freight, you think about Chase. You can't have every train. It's physically not possible. But you can have like one car on every train or you can have one thing at every place where they keep trains. I wanna be up in this whole country, not just one city or two cities at the same time. It's pretty rare now if I see a train go by and I don't got to throw up on it, but it does happen. There's other people that can do it. No one's done it. I mean, it's going to take you a long fucking time. I know that. 100 cars a night, three, 400, maybe 500 cars a week. And I did it for five years, six years, seven years, eight years, nine years, 10 years. I mean, it gets up there to like 30, 40, 50,000 throw ups. It adds up very quickly. My graffiti's seen more of this country than I ever will. It's seen everything, you know? And it kind of takes on a life of its own when you think about that. I had three cars on that train that just went by. First of all, the obstacle is getting in with all your supplies. You have to be aware of who's around you, who's going to call the police on you. If there's sensors, you know, you don't go in there slipping. And then, you know, you begin your project. And the beauty is, is you're the only one in the entire world at that moment that's in that position. I've been in plenty of situations where I've watched the world unfold in a way that most people don't get a chance to see it. And that's 12 stories up, hiding from a helicopter. When you're that high up and you're that visible and you're doing something so big, they pretty much can see you from a mile away, possibly. So that, there's a person in there looking, and he has infrared if he wants it. Oh, holy shit, your heart's pounding, and that voice inside of you that tells you not to do it, the guilt and, and the fear that's inside of you, your stomach turns into knots. It scares the shit out of me. I'm constantly like paranoid in fear of my own life. Those times, you know, on that six inch ledge where I just slipped and it's like, I've been there too many times. But if you don't do it, you don't succeed and someone else got the spot, someone else got the fame. Every single graffiti writer is a mag depressive, insecure person because that's the only thing that makes you want to go out and write on somebody's shit. You know, Satan's, to me, his anger stems from his separation anxiety from God. And this is what this painting is called, separation anxiety. At this moment, I got him at his weakness for the love of God. I'm not trying to be goth. I'm not trying to be satanic. These things just come out of me, and I just paint them. Another Satan. But I think I need to paint another angel now to balance it out. Uh, sometimes my imagination just kind of goes away with me. My dreams haunt relentlessly. Terrible, terrible nightmares. I will wake up in this kitchen, you know, freaking the fuck out or, or, or moving paintings in my sleep or these weird spider dreams that are just ruthless. And, uh, you know, I actually made a little spider and put it next to my bed so that it kind of was like my little spider protector and things. Graffiti flourishes where it's the worst, in the darkest places. You see things that you're not supposed to see. I mean, the amount of homeless sex that I've seen on the street is ridiculous. 
You're painting, what are you gonna do? Leave, because this idiot's gonna go fuck right next to you and smoke crack and shit? No, you're gonna keep painting, so you paint, you know? I've seen dudes coughing up tuberculosis, coughing up lung matter as he's walking along to go die in a fucking piss corner somewhere. There's plenty of dilapidated people out there that need somebody to pray for them, I mean, you know? On the other hand, people are in that position maybe because they deserve it or maybe because they made the wrong choices. Life is a dark fucking place. It's beautiful in the same token. A lot does grow in the dark. I've been coming here for 14, 15 years. But um, I actually fell in the river one time. I got caught in the currents. I had to get a hepatitis shot the next day. This place can be very dangerous at times. The freeway people can see you, CHP, the helicopters and the Amtrak. It's a strange place. It's just kind of like some no man's land. A lot of texture, I guess. That's my number one insecurity right there, and this is where I spilled the five gallons. And I just broke down that night, and I beat the bucket for like 45 minutes. I throw a few fits over this fucking beast. Right now we are in the LA River on my old piece I did in 1997. Roughly about 55 feet tall by almost 250 feet across. By the end, it took about 126 gallons of rolling paint. It took me about maybe 35 nights to paint this thing. Actually, I blew my knee out on this piece. All the time on the slant, I created a groove in the cartilage, so I had to get uh, surgery on my knee. I think the outline will hold uh, at least under 10 years, but you know, this environment, it gets so much sun, it gets so hot, all this paint just gets baked every day. Originally, when I finished it, it was 97 gallons, but uh, some asshole came from New York to diss it, so I came back and uh, did the outline. In the long run, I'm actually really glad he did that because it humbled me. And the other thing is it gave me so much freaking fame in New York that it revitalized my you know, presence. I wish it looked like it did the day I finished it, but... I guess it's a blessing that it's still even here at this point, you know? Every yard we have has a TKO, and that lets everybody know this is a TKO yard, come with respect. And they do. They usually just tag on the floor, you know? We have a lot of different riders here from Europe, New York, Mexico, Canada, and they all left their mark here on the floor. They haven't touched the murals. They respected all of our stuff, and that's, that's good. That's respect. That's my homeboy over. He was a <clears throat> he's young kid, 21. Earlier this year, he was murdered while we were uh, helping uh, try to move uh, her stuff. They fired one shot to the chest. And you know, I was trying to hold his chest in because um, Cause that's what I see on TV, you know? People trying to hold their wounds. So, wow, his blood was coming out of his mouth and nose and shit. And I couldn't help him. I screamed for help, but nobody would help us, you know? 
they just seen us as gang members or whatever, so why help gang members, right? We're using the payphone. We're using a fucking payphone, you know? Honestly, it's just like the graph, man. It's a matter of the odds. You know what I mean? If you keep banging the same strip, the same street, eventually they're gonna catch you. You know, writers I grew up with, like my boy Sam Martinez, killed. Chicago, killed. There was, I mean, my boy Dream, killed. Reed, killed. All, all these people that, I, that I, I was close with, that I grew up with, that did the same type of stuff that I did. You know what I mean? They all died, and the rest of them, you know, a lot of them went to jail. At, at one point in my life, I got into a horrible altercation with, with a guy, and uh, I paralyzed him on the left side of his body. Um, it was terrible. There was a, it was a fight, and a, you know, the kid was on drugs, and I had knocked him down, and he, you know, he, he tried to get physical with me, kick me as I was, I mean, I was coming after him and I kicked him in his head and fought him a little bit more. And the next day he woke up in his bed, paralyzed, pissed, pissed on himself the whole nine. The detectives were coming for me, you know. I almost wanted to break down crying, like, oh my God, what did I do to this guy? Or I'd start thinking about his mom and what his mom is thinking about it, you know what I mean? And, his, and I, I wouldn't have done that to anybody. Plus I had, like I said, I had done so many things that had worked against me when I lost my temper that it was really time for me to reevaluate how I was going to deal with situations, period. <laughs> We're in the DeVos Tunnel in San Francisco. I'm only going over spots that are dissed and uh, bullshit. Oh, it's too damn dusty. I always drink when I go painting, especially freights. Like, it takes the edge off. But um, soap, you know, Bill Schiff, we were partners and painting all the time. and. We were getting drunk and wasted. And uh, 10 years went by and I realized I hadn't gone and done graffiti once without being drunk. You know, and I pissed off a lot of friends, pissed off my girlfriend, and I'd passed out in yards before. So eventually took it too far and he died, you know? And uh, I think about him all the time. But then there's the thing with bombing. My stuff looks fucked up if I don't drink because I'm scared. <laughs> and I can't concentrate on what I'm doing and I'm like freaking out on all the sounds I hear in the background, you know? I need to get wasted or I end up just driving around the city all night looking at spots and not getting out and painting any of them. So I've been struggling here and there. I'd stop for a while and then start up again and stop. And losing him is, is, is helping me survive right now, you know? trying to keep my feet on the ground. I don't know, you may see me stung one. It happens. I have a bad temper, I guess. I'm comfortable being angry for its roots from when I was like being a kid and had no control over shit, you know? Like all these types of people that don't want fucking violence and graffiti, and but they still want all of the like, you know spice of New York culture at the same time. It's like you know, come on. If you can't fight, then that says something about you. You're not gonna be able to survive on certain levels. Right now, that element is like gone out of New York. You used to be able to fight, and it was okay, and it's therapeutic. You know, the cops would just break it up and send you home. That was great. Now you fucking bump into some guy in the street and you yell at him. Some some lady has already called the cops and they're on their way because she's on her cell phone. Oh my God. I got to move out of the U.S. because I can't fight in the street. You know, I, I need to be able to fight in the street if I because I'm an angry guy. And I'm gay and I'll fuck you up too. You know what? And I'm going to get up all over your fucking neighborhood and shit. All this self-control and like, oh. 
Uh, all this growing and shit, it's just like sucking the life out of ear snot and I can't do it that much anymore. I feel like I'm just gonna die, you know? So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I like to fight. Like, you think in your head, like, yeah, I got a bunch of fucking soldiers and they're gonna go out and do all kinds of shit. But then something happens to them and you're just fucked. You're fucked in your head because you just totally fucked this kid's life up. This kid just went out and did some stupid shit and you're gonna fucking burn in hell for it because you fucking put that shit in his head. Ty was climbing up these stairs, so he did his throw up. And this man who had sensors on the stairs pulled him down off the pole and started beating him down with the butt of the gun. Ty screamed for his life. And as he flew down the fucking stairs face first, that motherfucker shot my friend in the back of the head and blew his fucking head off. And so... It, Their wives and girlfriends and mothers look at me like, you motherfucker, you're the reason why my son, my boyfriend, my husband is going out and, 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 and fucking up in the streets because they want to be in TKO. His parents didn't know anything about him. His parents didn't know the legacy that he left behind that it even mattered, you know what I'm saying? They didn't know anything about their own son. If it was for me, then I'm ready to die and I don't really give a fuck. But fuck if that's gonna happen because I got a little sister that wants to see me and I got a mom that wants to see me every fucking night when I go home. I did have a choice, but you know, I failed to recognize the good choice from the bad choice and, and, and could have got married, could have had kids, I could have had a good career. You know, I, I would have been better with my family. And I lost all that shit forever for this graffiti. I'm fucking tired. I'm tired of fighting, I'm tired of arguing, I'm tired of fucking dealing with shit. And it's weird. I never thought that when I was a kid that how I'll be walking around with a fucking gun on a damn time. It makes me hate graffiti. all got bad luck stories. Maybe that's part of the attraction of it. I don't know. I personally, I'm tired of going to funerals. I'm tired of giving eulogies. I'm, I'm tired of that. I just have like a lot of love for people that want to get out and express themselves. If you go through life just taking care of your own stuff, then you've, you've really not lived your life. You, you need to do stuff to, to make people's lives better. Look how beautiful that is. See? That's, I mean, that's See, she wrote on the paper. That's what you're supposed to do. You don't write on someone's property. Unless they say it's okay to write on their property, then it's okay. You go write on the paper right now. That's a good idea. I can control the destiny of these paintings a lot easier than I can my graffiti. And I'm tired of getting buffed. I'm tired of getting dissed, you know? You pretty much gotta count on everything that you've ever done will get dissed, buffed, or fade away. There's over. He touched that surface. You know, he's gone. What sucks is that that's it for that kid right there. That's all he has left in this world. And one day that will be gone. So now we are in the LA River. It smells a lot nicer in here though. I had the great opportunity to paint this. An institution like this has never included graffiti, you know? What's more important, vandalizing or actually doing something that will last? So it's not about just being a young punk running around destroying shit. Right now I'm thinking about the maturity of graffiti. Where you take it when you get older. See, I can no longer just look at it for what it is and say, that's great. I have to make it something that is uh, positive, something that 
that I can inspire people that, look, I went through all of that. You know the stories. You know what kind of person I was. But you can do positive things. You can change. I think that graffiti taught me my work ethic, respect, and I thought that they were just graffiti skills, and then I learned very quickly that they're life skills. I'm glad that she is respected and that people like her work. More importantly, that she respects herself and is satisfied with her own life. That's more important than being looked at as a cultural icon. Do I really need to bomb the streets if people are wearing a claw on their chest? I don't know. It's never going to be done because all the ones I did in the first couple of years, those are fading away. So you get to a certain amount. The only thing you can do is just go as often as possible so it just gets bigger and bigger. Graffiti is like a big race, but there's no winner. All you can do is stay in the lead for as long as possible. I'm proud of my son. I, I envy that passion and that talent. I'm glad he has an expression for it. If you don't like it, that's your, that's you, you know? You don't have to look at it. There's a train that goes right through the city here, two blocks from my house. Every time the train goes by, I look at every single car, seeing if I can spot Jason's art on it, every time. And I think, you know, one of these days, he's gonna send me a message across the train. <laughs> you see that? That's my brother. I'm proud of him. I don't care that everybody sees it, you know, I just know some people will see it. That's good enough for me, you know? Like, look, look, I was here, because that's all it really is. Like, look, you know what I mean? Like, this is me, and, you know, and like, keep it moving. And like, mad people do it for the same community of people, you know, just so that they could be like, look, 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 guys, look, I got a new one, you know what I mean? So like, human for like, people to want to do that, you know? It's over, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, here in the United States, it's over, but the rest of you motherfuckers are on the planet. Hey, they ain't buffing shit out here. Shit's staying up. It's time to move. It's not even like I'm gonna like stop forever. I just have to maybe stop for for now or for nah, fuck that. I'm not gonna stop. See, I should just say what it was. The older writers came back because they had a midlife crisis. They got a little bit older. They see the young bucks coming out. They like, I used to do that and I was better. So they gotta go back and do it. And I think that's what's gonna happen to me at some point. <laughs> then I'm gonna go through a midlife crisis, but we won't call it that. We're gonna call it a comeback. <laughs> you see me out there. Believe that shit.
It's just about a name. 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 You want to date penguins, man, <laughs> knock yourself out. I'm all for it. Doesn't bother me. You want to come into my bed with that penguin, now we have to sit down and talk.